How's everybody doing today? I'm Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live, your host with our very special guest, Vahid Shabibi, the Chief Growth Officer of Victory Squared Technologies. How are you doing today, Vahid? Hi, Rich. Thanks for having me. I'm great. I uh, hope everyone is well. I'm feeling great. I know that uh, there's been a lot of news with Victory Square Technology, so let's get right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about Victory Square Technologies and how you got involved? Absolutely. So at Victory Square Technologies, uh, we buy, build, and invest uh, in tech giants of the future globally. So uh, the way that we got to this concept, we actually started it in mid-90s um, when we saw the internet was going to disrupt how people uh, across, uh, how people are having access to the information and connecting with each other. Uh, so we identified the opportunities in mid to late 90s and in connecting people and started dating websites back then in, in early ages. Um, that was a great, uh, you know, uh, the opportunity that we, we, we found was great, um, brought lots of traffic, positive cash flow. And uh, when, we when we got to that point, then we look for what's next as far as what can be the next destinations for the crowd and the customers that we already have so we can buy or build the next destination. Going back in last 30 days, we saw, you know, we, 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 we've seen how tech disrupted our people's lives through internet and mobile and all these changes that is happening. And um, since uh, three, four years ago, we started focusing on the next revolution, tech revolution, we call it the fourth industrial revolutions, which we feel is around intelligence and data. Uh, it's it's uh, it's around uh, personalized medicines, uh, AI, AR, VR, uh, digital health, cybersecurity, and start either investing or building uh, companies that could be ready for it when the next wave comes. So now we uh, again, COVID kind of expedited at this process, and we see you know many of these that you know maybe six, seven months ago were not as of a hot topic, uh, like telehealth, for example. Um, now is a hot topic and expedited this revolution. So because we focused in this from, you know, three, four years ago, now we have the, the, our companies, our portfolio companies to be ready with the product, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, customers and having, you know, experience after two, three years serving those services and being ready for, for this. So, uh, you know, right now uh, we're, we're focusing on these portfolio companies, the 23 portfolio companies that uh, we've been working with them, um, you know, since uh, three, four years ago and we invested them in the last two, three, four years. Now, can you update us on Victory Square Health and the progress with your 15-minute rapid test for COVID-19? Absolutely. So, um, again, to the same, uh, through the same process that I described earlier, um, we identified uh, an opportunity around diagnostic testing and health tech about like three years ago. And we invested in a company called, uh, we founded a company called Victory Square Health. Originally, we invested it in, in a project uh, called Personal Biomakers Inc. It's a PBI uh, and focusing also on uh, identifying the, the opportunities in health tech. Um, we were monitoring a company from Brazil for past year and a half. Um, uh, and we, we acquired the company called SafeTest from Brazil, this company has seven, eight different diagnostic tests. Two of the tests that they have is around COVID-19. Now, the, the, uh, we, we acquired this company earlier this year. And um, when we acquired this company, our focus around uh, all the diagnostic tests that they have, especially on COVID-19, because of what is happening around the world, uh, was on four different areas. One getting the approvals from the government entities, uh, uh, you know, approvals that is needed for different jurisdiction to have a good relationship with the governments and, and get approval to make sure we are within the framework that each government is asking. Um, at the same time, we're also trying to um, lock down different distributions and, and uh, distributors in different jurisdictions around the world because that would have expedited the process for getting a greater reach on finding the customers. I am also uh, working on, on the um, capacity of manufacturing capacity, especially around COVID-19, because as we see the demand is high and this demand is not going to come down 
anytime soon. Uh, and you know, to help the economy to go back to normal safely, or people going back to school, or you know, families going back to the semi-normal, we wanted to make sure that we can contribute into that and also support our business. And the fourth uh, area that we've been focusing on is the full service uh, tech for around the healthcare, uh, around the health, and having our health tech ready to go uh, by Q1 uh, 2021. Now, uh, through that, the two different tests that they have, one is at least a three hours lab test and the other one is a 15 minutes rapid test antibody test. Um, so the ELISA test, the approval process was quicker. We received uh, the FDA permission under EUA stage one uh, to be able to sell and, and market within the United States. Um, we received in visa for Brazil so we can sell the test in Brazil and we received EU, which is a CE mark to be able to market and sell cell in, um, in Europe. Rapid test, uh, the antibody rapid test, uh, the approval process and submission process was longer because of uh, you know, the clinical validation and the numbers and different things that we needed to do from the technical perspective that uh, we received the FDA permission uh, under e EUA uh, stage one to sell in the United States. Um, we just received the EU mark uh, and approval for, for uh, European unions. Um, and our application is under review with Health Canada and then Visa in Brazil uh, that uh, we're expecting to receive, uh, you know, those uh, approvals, you know, uh, up and um, reviewing our applications. Uh, so uh, th that's that's the latest we had. The, the EU approval that we got that opened a, a, a you know, huge door for us simply because we were in conversation with many distributors and we couldn't simply send even samples to them uh, and and sign the contract because we needed it to have those approvals. Um, and team is working really hard on uh, working with Health Canada and 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 Visa to get those approvals as well. Um, however, uh, it, it, also the team is not pausing that. Uh, the, the conversation and contracts for distribution and sales because they um, many of these kind of contracts that it's on the jurisdictions that we don't have approval is there is a term that is up and receiving approval so that's pending to that that was actually leading into my next question so have you guys secured any sales and distribution contracts yet so um, that's actually a very good question. So we have received a two million order with one of the largest PP providers in Canada called TM Safety, and our our uh, basically um, uh, contract with them and, and the agreement with them is not only um, they're gonna start selling our. Uh, tests uh, to their customers, but also they give Victory Square Health and Victory Square Technologies access to all their PPE items at the cost price. So other distributors of ours, if they want the PPE, that can go through Victory Square Health and uh, you know create another uh, um, avenue for revenue for the company. Right. Um, that's depending on the Health Canada approval. Um, we are also working with some associations in Canada, uh, Canadian gaming associations, uh, we finalized an agreement with them that they oversee uh, the, the casinos and, and, the, and the gaming in, in Canada. Also the, uh, the Canadian police uh, that, that you know, we've, uh, we had an agreement with them right now, all that is depending to the Health Canada approval. From Brazil, we had a few orders. Uh, you know, one of the orders is on the rapid test that we are waiting for in Visa to, to you know, to give us uh, that um, the, the final approval to be able to start producing it and and passing it to the customers. Also in Europe, uh, there are few distribution contracts that has been finalized. Um, now, uh, since we received the EU, we started producing uh, the the test and the samples will will be shipped to them uh, in next uh, fourteen days uh, for uh, basically for their approval and then up in that uh, basically we're going to start um, shipping the actual orders. Also in the meantime we finalize uh, some agreements and uh, distribution agreements with partners in uh, Southeast Asia that uh, you know the, the agreement that we have with them is in two folds. One is for them to distributing our tests and the PP items that we have and the second part of it is they're also uh, leading us and helping us to receive necessary approvals within each jurisdiction. That's incredible. You guys are doing so much work on an international level. It's, it's impressive. And you just did a $4 million private placement. What was the logic behind that? 
So the, the $4 million uh, uh, private placement that we announced, that was a very strategic move that we needed it to do. And there are a few reasons behind that. As, as uh, most of our shareholders know, um, we've had access to $10 million convertible notes by our CEO, Shifin Diamond Tejani, uh, in the last four years. And we've been using that for the operation uh, budgets uh, and cost, as well as the investing in our portfolio companies or new opportunities. And we still have access to that $10 million of convertible notes. But um, when uh, we plan for the company, we don't only look at the next step. What we try to do, we try to see at least five or six steps ahead of us and see how we can pave the way for us to get there. One of the items that we feel we needed to do based on the private placement is diversifying our investors to welcoming institute uh, to, to, to come as an investors, some strategic investors that they've been very active and supportive of some larger um, uh, projects in healthcare and health, uh, telehealth that not only in this round, but also later on when the company grows, if the company needs more funding for bigger projects and, and going after more acquisitions and all that, the people that we have as investors, we have a, diver, uh, you know, a, a diversified uh, investor base for us. Also, um, uh, when, when um, we um, do the, we've never done a proper raise at DSD, meaning the raise that we've done and, and the shareholders that we had is from uh, our CEO and, and you know, investors around us. Now, doing this and doing it properly with an investment bank, it helps the Victory Square to be showcased in different uh, researches with different uh, analyst coverages that we need and bring more eyeballs on Victory Square technology uh, through other institutes uh, that is happening. Um, also, the other plan that we have is, is uplisting and, and uh, uplisting DSD, which the race was one of the you know key components that we needed it to do uh, on that one. Now, in order to bring this strategic investment investors in, we needed to have uh, the entry points was very important, how we can uh, welcome these people in, into the investor base that we have, because we've really been um, very grateful for the investors that we already have with the support that they have, the communication, they're reaching out, asking questions and, and uh, you know supporting us in thick and thin in past uh, few years that we have. Now, we wanted to make sure the decision is something that everyone can benefit from that. And bringing this strategy investors is going gonna, is gonna to support our future growth. When we look at some other successful companies that have done this and, and doing it more and more, you know, uh, such as Well Health, uh, Cloud MD, these are like a great companies with a great management team that are doing a great job right now. This is a similar path that also they took. And we needed it to bring this in investor base to, for our future growth. And, you know, having more cash for the company is always is beneficial for the investors and the company because that makes us, uh, our, 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 it, that empowers us to not only uh, find other opportunities to invest, uh, but also it gives us uh, more, uh, more power in, in uh, capturing the best opportunity at any given time. Now, it's really important for us to find companies that have a very tight share structure. It's one of the key elements to our success as a community. We love tight float stocks. Victory Square Technologies has a very tight float. Can you talk a little bit about the share structure and what the percentages are of insiders and institutions that have taken a position in Victory Square Technologies? Absolutely. So um, uh, we have uh, over 75 million outstanding shares today uh, in, in, in market. And um, around 30% of that are being held by insiders and management team. Uh, the largest shareholder for the company as of today is the CEO of the company, Shifin Diamond. Nobody from the management team has exercised or sold any stock uh, you know, in past 12 months, uh, and I think even 24 months because we all believe in the long, uh, go, the long term goal that we have and we're in it with our shareholders. So um, the management team has, has been in it uh, and, and we believe in this, uh, in the, in, in this project uh, that, that we're, we're working on right now. From the inst institution, I'm not really sure. And that was one of the uh, you know, key points that we wanted to do the 4 million uh, private placement that we announced to welcome some of the institute to come in and support us, uh, support our future growth as well. So. As, as I mentioned, currently, is, I think is over 75 million outstanding shares uh, in the market. Now, Victory Square Technologies has quite an impressive roster of experts. Who are your key members and what do they bring to the table? So I answer your questions in, in, in two different categories. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the 
key element of success for us is our partnerships um, with uh, not only the, the 80 plus accelerator around the world that we have access to, to find the right opportunities, but also some um, the major companies in the market that give us access to opportunities and they can become our first uh, customers or their customers become our their first customers. So they help us to identify the pains within the market and find the solution for it. The second part of it is, is the management team and our advisors. We have a very experienced uh, you know, advisory group around us that when we take over a company or when we invest in the company, uh, we are not a passive investors. We identify the main needs that they have and we put an advisory team together based on advisors that we have. And we have them to work directly with this company. So um, the, 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 the two big elements that we have is one advisory team and the management team that they're working with the companies hands-on. And the second part of it is our partnerships uh, that you know enabled us uh, to have access to the customers and also have access to the companies because if uh, you know if, you know if you remember from from the first question that you have the, the the way that we look at things is we're creating this ecosystem either we usually go after finding a solution or a product for existing customers that we have through our ecosystem or we go find a, you know a company that have extra users or customers for one of the products that we have and that reach will help us to to find one or the other and, and help our portfolio companies and Victory Square and uh, you know, eventually our shareholders. If there was one thing that you would want shareholders to know about Victory Square Technologies Inc., what would it be? So uh, the biggest thing for the Victory Square Technology is um, we're not a company to, to look at our next steps. We'll look at it at next five or six steps, right? So right now there is a hub market around COVID and we're trying to capitalize around the COVID. But even the Victory Square Hub by itself, that's not it. We are trying to have these customers uh, to come in and creating that customer base when we're helping the community, when we are generating revenue for the company. But there are you know, another seven or eight diagnostic tests and our you know, telehealth and, and health tech uh, you know, is going to be launched uh, you know, uh, hopefully by Q1 that then we have users for it. Now, that's only the Victory Square Hub. There are 22 other portfolio companies in AR VR, gaming, cybersecurity, um, you know, um, that, that, that uh, benefits our shareholders. So um, the Victory Square right now, I feel um, we are at, you know, early stage of earlier stages of, of a big growth from, from the portfolio perspective, from the revenue perspective, from the value perspective. And the management team is in it, uh, you know, uh, and, and we all have a skin in the game, um, you know, trying to be hands-on as much as we can with our portfolio companies and, and uh, to, 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 to uh, pay back the support and the trust that our shareholders are, are giving us. Now, it's very, very important for our investors to be able to get in contact with the company. If they have a question, if they want to learn more, how do they get in contact with you, Vahid? So um, I, I've been, so I personally been trying to, to be in touch with our shareholders myself when they reach out, because I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, sometimes when the shareholders are seeing it, they have the public traded company. Let me take one step back. Public traded company have advantage and some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages from my perspective is the communications are limited because we need to follow the, 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 the procedures and protocols by different government bodies, which trying to make this game fair for everyone. Because of that, so obviously we can talk about some of the things that you know it's happening or hasn't been finalized yet. Uh, so that makes it a bit hard. But I personally has been trying to be uh, you know accessible to to our shareholders as much as I can, simply because number one they deserve to, to have this conversation, provide feedback. Sometimes the feedback that we're getting are very great feedback that it helps the community and helps the rest of the shareholder and helps the company. Um, however, uh, not only the management team is interested to talk to the shareholders, but we have an IR that there is always reachable. Um, you know, obviously sometimes one-to-one -one is hard and takes time based on the number of the shareholders. We have a mailing list that we always update the shareholders based on the latest releases or updates uh, around the corporate updates. They can join our, um, our, our mailing list through our website, victorysquare.com. Uh, we also have uh, you know, almost all the social media channels. The reason I'm saying almost because every day the new social media channel opens up, uh, but like on, on Facebook, on, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, we have that. Uh, they can follow us through that. 
management team, myself, uh, Shifin Diamond Tejani, um, uh, our board members, they all are on LinkedIn. We'll be more than happy to connect with them that uh, through that. Again, we feel the personal touch is the biggest thing because uh, that's that 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 has been the our recipe of success to be accessible to our shareholders, to our companies to the people around us uh, to make sure that uh, we hear them. And obviously there's gonna be some noise that we need to filter out, but uh, getting more ideas and getting uh, more solutions always more helpful for people to make the best decision for the company. And as I said, focusing in five, six and 10 steps ahead and come, you know, go back to today to see what is needed to be done rather than focusing only on one step or two steps. Super excited to have this interview with you today. And I'm really excited about what's coming next. I've been watching your guys' news and it seems as though it just keeps getting better and better. And I love telemedicine and you guys are in telemedicine. I love gaming. You guys are in gaming. I love virtual reality. You guys are in virtual reality. So I love the businesses that you guys are involved with. I really like Victory Square Technologies. I like the share structure, I like the management team. I like the direction you guys are going in. And when I went through the website, one of the things that caught my attention is your revenue growth potential is spectacular. So I really agree with you when you say that you're in the early stages. So congratulations on all your success. I believe you're probably still just in the first inning. So hopefully we can have you come back as you guys continue to evolve and have big breaking news. I'd love to have you come back on our show so we can discuss it. Thank you for joining us today. And I appreciate it. Um, uh, the Chief Growth Officer of Victory Square Technologies, Vahid Shabibi. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for giving us this time. And uh, again, uh, you said it well, it's just for us is right now, COVID expedited at this revolution that we've been uh, expecting to come in next 12 to 18 months. But um, you know, we're very grateful that we made this space and foundation ready to, to be ready for this. Uh, so you know, I appreciate you giving us time to speak with our investors and potential investors and, 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 and the board. And uh, we'll look forward to chatting with you more. Absolutely, guys, put Victory Square Technologies on your radar, put on your watch list. Thank you, Vahid, have yourself a nice day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys for watching, we'll talk to you soon.